All right, here we go. This is a basic review of chapter two. We're going to try to cover as much as possible. And I notice not as many funny, goofy antics, no mullets, no uh, none of that crazy stuff with this crazy snow schedule we've had. You know, we're trying, we got to give a test to you guys, you know, in the near future next week. Check the website for announcements about that. So, you know, since we are missing some school time, we're still going to cover the material, but I want to make sure that you guys have extra review or extra tutoring just to make up for this lack of time on the video here. So I'm going to briefly go over Newton's three laws, talk about a little bit with centripetal force, and I'm going to talk about the basic concept with momentum. All classes in terms of momentum, all you will need to do is just calculate and know the basic definition and concept. Um, we're not going to get crazy into scenarios with collisions and everything else with any of the classes. Centripetal force, same across the board. Uh, Newton's first, second, and third laws. You know, we know what we need to do for that. Um, so check the websites for updates on your test dates and everything else. But again, I'm putting this quick review video together. Usually we have Ms. Camilleri or Dr. Phillips. We only have 30 minute periods. So we don't have time to get together and do this given how many days we're missing at school. So, you know, you better appreciate this. There's a lot of work that goes into this and, uh, you know, we're doing it to help you. So hopefully you're watching it and you're really paying attention. Okay, I'm going to start off with Newton's first law. Newton's first law talks about the following. Okay, an object at constant velocity. When we think constant velocity, that means no acceleration. An object at rest, constant velocity, will stay at rest or at constant velocity, either way, unless acted upon by an outside unbalanced force. Let's talk about that for a second. We have balanced forces, and we have unbalanced forces. Balanced forces, right? What happens that is what that means is there is zero net force. And what balanced force says the object stays at constant velocity. What does that mean? It stays going the same speed and direction. Straight line, same speed. Or it's at rest. So balance forces mean the object stays at constant velocity, which means it's going the same speed and direction, or at rest, and because of that there's no net force. So we said to you earlier, forces are not required to keep an object in motion. If an object is in cruise control or it's going the same speed, same direction, there's no forces acting upon it to move. Okay? Forces don't, you know, keep an object in motion. So balance forces cancel each other out. You can have an object going the same speed, or it's at rest, and there's zero net force. Unbalanced forces, on the other hand, cause acceleration. And you're going to have a value of greater, greater than zero net force. There will be a net force. And because that, when you have an unbalanced force, you're going to see acceleration. So again, Balanced forces are like no net, no net force, no, no force at all. They stay at constant velocity, they go in the same speed, the same direction, or they stay at rest. Okay? So again, this eraser, I don't know if you can see it, it's resting on the table, it's going to stay there unless it's acted upon by an outside unbalanced force. A ball could be rolling at a constant speed in a straight line. If its speed is the same, direction is the same, there's no force that going, it's balanced forces. Unbalanced forces, though, force of friction going against it will cause it to slow down. Isn't slowing down acceleration? So again, any unbalanced force causes acceleration. And acceleration is speed up, slow down, change direction. Okay, so Newton's first law, an object stays at rest or at constant velocity unless acted upon by an outside unbalanced force. And every unbalanced force leads to acceleration. So let me go a little more in depth with that. Okay, so if I have a graph right here, oh, good graphs, love graphs. Let's go with velocity time graph. You know, acceleration, which has changed velocity over time. We have segment A, B, C, D, E, F, F. So we'll label A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay? And we're only going to stay in the positive direction. 
Now let's take a look here. A, would you say we've got balance drawn balance forces? Do we have acceleration? Yes, there's a change in velocity. So we've got unbalanced forces for A because we're accelerating. B means constant speed. It's important. I'm not speeding up or slowing down. There's no change in velocity here. So I've got balanced forces for B because there's no change in velocity. Hit the brakes. Slowing down. Slowing down. This, you know, going right for you people in the positive direction. We've got slowing down. This is unbalanced forces. UBF is C because we're slowing down. D. We're moving. We've got velocity. We're moving, but it's not changing. So we've got balanced forces because the object is going at a constant speed in the same direction. So B and D, constant speed, same direction, balanced forces. Any slope, any acceleration, any change in velocity is an unbalanced force. Here, unbalanced force. Slowing down, big time right here. Major slowdown right here, okay? In the same uh, direction, going right. And then F means stop. We're at rest. Why is F rest? Because the value for velocity here is zero. So here are balanced forces right here. So A, C, I'll say it again, A, C, E, unbalanced forces because there is a change in velocity. B, D, F, B and D are a little bit different than F. B and D means we're going the same speed, same direction. So you still have balanced forces. Here it's stopped at rest, balanced forces. Okay? There's Newton's first law right there. Alright? So with that, every time, want to take a look at that for a second? Okay? You can pause it if you want. I gotta keep moving. Alright, here we go. So now look here. Every time unbalanced force leads to acceleration. Every time there's an unbalanced force of acceleration, you have something called inertia. And inertia is directly related to mass. The greater the mass, the greater the inertia. The greater the mass, the greater the inertia. Okay, so here are some examples. If I'm sitting, or if I'm driving, going at constant speed in a car, and we did this in class, and all of a sudden there's a deer in the road. <laughs> These are funny examples of class. I hit the brakes. When I hit the brakes, there's an unbalanced force. I'm going to slow down. Acceleration. But what happens to me the, in the car? The car jerks forward. The car jerks forward. It wants to resist. Keep going forward. Inertia, resistance to acceleration. It wants to keep going forward, but you're going to bam, make it stop. So that's why the seatbelt to lock you in place so you don't fly through the window. You're locked in place. Goes forward. Or when you run really fast, you want back and want to run. Now stop. You fall forward because you're applying the force to stop. Your body wants to resist that and go forward. Okay? Another example that's really good, you have that glass Heinz ketchup bottle. And you shake the bottle, the ketchup doesn't come out. Shake. Bam! Stop the bottle. Like, boom, like this. The ketchup, what happens? Comes out. Even though you stop the bottle, the ketchup still comes out because the ketchup shows inertia. It's, you know, you stop it, the ketchup still wants to go forward. Okay? Another example, if you've got a van, here's my beautiful van I'm going to draw. Look at that. Right? You put a ladder up on top of the van. Look at that ladder. Boom, there's a ladder. You don't secure it, or you don't secure it well. You go really fast, and all of a sudden you stop. Here's your unbalanced force, ladder falls forward. It wants to keep resisting that change. So every time you have an unbalanced force, you've got inertia. Inertia depends on mass, and that's resistance to acceleration. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay, Make, looks good. So inertia, we also call Newton's first law the law of inertia. Okay, Newton's second law. Second law. The acceleration of an object depends on its force and mass. Okay? So let's take a look at this. Oh, wait a second. I forgot. 
that song, no I didn't, I just wanted to see if you are paying attention. There's a certain song that um, talks about a nurse and covers Newton's first law. Remember celebration? Celebrate good times, come on! Da, 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 whatever. Remember that song from the last video? Instead of celebration, acceleration, unbalanced! Speed up, slow down, change direction. Every time in her show. Sing it again. Covers first law perfectly. There goes the bell again. Covers first law perfectly. Acceleration. Unbalanced. Speed up, slow down, change direction. Every time in her show. Okay? So again, we use the song Excel, um, Acceleration. Unbalanced happens because of an unbalanced force. Because of that, speed up, slow down, change direction, and every time there's what? Inertia. Well, it's pronounced inertia. But I use that to keep the song going, okay? So keep that in mind. Okay, now to the second law, okay? We look at this formula right here, force equals mass times acceleration. And I'm not gonna spend as much time on this because I gave you a nice video for Newton's second law as it is. So let's change this around to A equals force over mass, right? How can I get my acceleration to increase? Well, let's see. Let's use our common sense. If I, hold on. Hello, here I am. That's like a big filing cabinet which has like a lot of mass. And I'm going to apply a little force to it. Is it accelerating much, if anything? No, because it's got large amount of mass and I'm not applying that much force. So acceleration is going to be small, if anything. So in order to make this large mass move, I've got to apply a lot of force to get some acceleration. So watch this. Moved a little bit, man. I apply a lot of force. But it's so massive, I can only get it to accelerate a little bit. What should I do to the filing cabinet? Hold on, let me try to push it back so you can see. Oh, what should I do to this filing cabinet to make it accelerate more? Can I wave a magic wand and make it disappear or drop down in half? No. We can decrease the mass. So let's take some junk out of here. There we go. Decreasing mass. Look at this mess in here. Decreasing mass. Decreasing mass. Whoops. Decreasing mass. Decreasing mass. Oh, this should be fun. Decreasing mass. <clears throat> Decreasing mass. We're going to make it accelerate more. Decreasing mass. Oh. Here we go. Decrease mass. Decrease mass. Decrease mass. Decrease mass. Hold on, take this out. Oh. Look at all that matter. Mass is pulled out of there. Oh man, look at this. Ew. I, uh, ew, yuck. Penn State. Well, I went to grad school there. We don't tell anybody that. Okay, okay. decrease mass. Decrease mass. Don't. Hold on. Oh, look at this. What is this? University of Pittsburgh. Oh wow, organic chemistry. Look at all the oh, guys, you think you take a lot of notes? Here's all my old organic chemistry notes. This was for one of the courses. Oh wow. Decrease mass. Decrease mass. Decrease mass. Decrease mass. Decrease mass. Oh, let's go back. Look at this. Freshman phys uh, freshman chemistry of Pitt. Look at that old notebook. So I took out all that mass. So since I decreased the mass. Let's see how much it'll accelerate. I've decreased the mass, less mass. I'm gonna apply a force to it. How do you think that'll accelerate? It'll accelerate more, watch. Whoa, there it goes. Watch this, I'll apply it again. There we go. Ready, set, go. Yeah! Look at that sucker go. Less mass. Get out of here, look at that. Now I'm all strong, right? More like less mass. So if I apply, you know, a decent amount of force with less mass, it will accelerate more, okay? So if I, let's say, again, with this, 
F over M, right? Let's say I increase the mass and I apply the same force. So let's say I put all this mass, all this stuff back in there. Hold all that mass, books and notes and everything else. Put all that mass back in there. Apply the same force, the acceleration will decrease, okay? So it's the relation between force, mass, and acceleration. Acceleration increases due to an increase in force and a decrease in mass. Acceleration, I'm not answering the phone now. Acceleration decreases when force is the same and mass increases. Okay, so that's Newton's second law. Third law, I think I hit everything I wanted to hit off of Newton's second law. Hold on. Oh, centripetal force, okay good. This goes with Newton's second law. This covers changing direction. Here's the circle. Here's the center of the circle. Center of Catal. Center. Center of pedal. Force. Centripetal force. We don't use centripetal force. It's centripetal. And I always say pedal to the center. Centripetal force always goes toward the center. Right here, here's the center. Always goes toward the center. Always goes toward the center. Always goes toward the center. Always goes to 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 the center. Centripetal force 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 to the center. So if an object is traveling this way, the force that keeps it in a circle is centripetal force. Keeps object traveling in a circle. So there's always an unbalanced force because it's always accelerating. Unbalanced force, 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 always pulling inward. So let me ask you this. Whenever there's an unbalanced force, we have inertia. Which way is the stuff in here gonna go? Outward, due to inertia. So if you always have a force pulling in, there's always going to be a resistance outward, like into the object. That's why you say water can stay in a bucket. That's why it can stay in your seat with a roller coaster. Its centripetal force is toward the center. The inertia keeps you in the keeps the object in the basket or in the bucket. Now, if you're going around this way, and all of a sudden I decide to, where's my technology? I need some colored chalk. It's covered by all the mass. Here's my technology. Colored chalk. Here we go. Let's say. Here's the object right here, it's coming around. Right here, all of a sudden, stop! No more centripetal force. Which way is the object gonna to wanna to go? Outward or this way? It's gonna to wanna to go this way. Tangential to the circle, okay? Because the object wants to go in a straight line. The centripetal force keeps pulling it in. Pull in, pull in, pull in, pull in. Stop it, wants to go, it'll go out in the straight line, tangential to a circle. So again, centripetal force, force that keeps objects in a circle. Newton's second law again, it's accelerating because it's changing direction. Here's another example. Put the box here. It's going this way. Right? It's with the centripetal force going inward, right? Like that. If I stop it right here, it will go outward like that. It will continue to go in a straight line, tangential to the circle. Okay? Let's say I stop it right here. Stop! It'll go here. Let's say I stop it right here. It'll go out here. Let's say I stop it right here. Boom, it'll go out this way, tangential to the circle. It will not go outward like that. The object wants to keep going the way it was going. It's being pulled in, pull in, pull in the center, pull in the center, pull in the center, pull in the center, pull in, stop, boom, out. Okay, so that's the tangential to the circle. Hi, Miss Antel. So it's gonna go straight. It wants to go straight. The object's being uh, pulled through the centripetal force, I'm going to say, I tell you, are making me laugh, you're so funny. It's being pulled through the center. So there we go. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Third law. For every action force, there's a reaction force. Watch my hand. See my hand right here? Ow. I don't really feel that much in my hand. I apply force to board. Board applied a little force to my hand. Let's hit harder, shall we? <laughs> Hurts a little, a little sting there. What caused it to sting? My action force was the hand to the board. The reaction force was my was the board to my hand. So it must be a force causing my hand to hurt. Let's do it again. Let's make it harder. 
More, let's have more action force, but I'm afraid of what might happen. Ah! Hands turning more red now. Action force to the board, hand to board, is equal to the reaction force, board to hand. Action reaction forces are equal opposing forces acting on two different objects, they're equal. Another example, I love my eraser. If I punch the eraser at that split second, pretend I'm not holding this, okay? If I hit it and it flies, that hit, there's an action force from my hand to the eraser and a simultaneous reaction, or simultaneously, sorry, again, this is unscripted and I'm doing the best I can right off the top of my head. Simultaneous reaction force to my hand. That split second, those forces are equal, even this sucker, whoa, flies. It flies because it's a force being applied to it, but it's got small mass, therefore it'll accelerate, okay? So, another example. Volleyball. Volleyball. Let's serve the volleyball. Here we go. Woo! Ouch. Hand to ball. Action force. Reaction force. Split second. Ball to hand. Equal forces. The ball will fly. It'll accelerate because this has a smaller mass. It'll fly. When it hits the ground, action reaction. As you walk on the ground, here, watch this. Watch my foot. Hopefully the foot comes up on the video. Here's my foot, see my foot right there? As you walk off the ground, you apply a downward force to the, to the table, or the ground. The ground, or this, in this case, table, will apply an upward force on you. Action, reaction, they're always equal. Action, reaction forces are equal, so that's how you walk. Action force down onto the ground, reaction force, upward force onto your feet. So they are equal. One thing I will say is this. Here's the table. Isn't that an awesome table? Okay. Here's a person wanting to push it. And here's another person wanting to push it. Let's focus over here. Action force. Action force. Hand to table. Reaction force. Table to hand. Okay? So with an action-reaction force, you've got two different forces acting on two different objects. What are the objects? Hand, table, table, hand. Two different forces, two different objects. They are going to be equal in magnitude. Okay? And then over here, hand to table, action force. Hand to table. Right? And then the reaction force is table to hand. They are equal in magnitude. Again, two different forces acting on two different objects. Table and hand, two different forces. Okay? You need to know that. Um, another example, when you let air out of a balloon, whichever direction the air is going out, that's the action force. The reaction force is the push off of the air and the surrounding air molecules to propel the balloon the opposite way. When you row in a boat, you push the water backwards, the water pushes you forward. When you swim, which I can't do, when you swim, you're pushing water backwards, the water is simultaneously pushing you forwards. Action, reaction. Kicking a soccer ball, yes I said soccer. When you kick, <laughs> foot to ball, action, reaction, ball to foot. They're equal in magnitude, but the ball goes far because it's got a small mass, well, small mass, large acceleration. Um, again, hand to board, ow, that hurt. Why did it hurt? The board exerted an equal force back on the day. When you walk, that's another example. Um, okay, those are some examples of Newton's third law. I'm about out of time, unfortunately. Uh, momentum, there will be a momentum calculation video hopefully later this week, but uh, hey, we reviewed Newton's first law, second law, third law. You've got enough reading for it. We also did centripetal force. Okay, there's no excuse. Okay, you got your work. You know what's at stake. You know when your tests are. Let's get on. I hope you watch this video. Hey, spread this video to everybody. I don't care. Let everybody watch it. Spread it around. Let's get all over the world. Again, South Korea checked in. Um, Germany, United Kingdom, South Africa, Canada. We're, there. we're everywhere now. Let's keep it going. All right, very good. I hope this helps, but that's all the time I have, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Thank you very much.
There's that. 